Hey everyone, I wanted to kick off a new tutorial series covering one of our Notion OS templates. And I wanted to just give a bit more of a structured instruction so that if you are using the template or if you're thinking of starting your own business system inside of Notion, then you should have a little bit more guidance with these tutorials rather than just kind of an hour long walkthrough of the setup. So in this first tutorial, we'll be focusing on planning and strategy. This is things like competitors, user personas, positioning. You can learn more about Clarity OS in the description below. And otherwise, I hope you enjoy the video. So the first thing to note is the structure of the Notion OS. And this is going to be similar for all of the models on the Landmark website. So we have a menu and we have a map. Those are kind of the two key things to always be aware of. Inside the map, you'll find all of the databases that make up the Notion OS system. And inside the menu, you will see all of the pages that make up the setup. So we're going to be discussing everything from everything underneath this planning subheading inside the menu. So strategy, ideation, objectives, and on. The home dashboard is just a summary of some of the other areas of the setup. So what we have is an overview of our projects. We have an overview of our high priority actions, and we have a linked embedded Google mm -hmm. Analytics dashboard. So we will be covering projects and actions, how to create, track, and sort actions um, in another tutorial where we cover this section. For now, let's just talk about planning and strategy inside of this OS. So the idea is basically that these pages will be a little bit more, these pages will be a little bit more static than the actions area. And this is where we can kind of do some of our more long-term thinking. So for example, we have a SWAT board, a lean canvas, and a notebook as our kind of summary overview of the strategy section. And this is just to help us kind of hone in on what it is that we want to focus on a uh, high level in our business. So a SWOT analysis is quite a common framework. It just helps you uh, identify your strengths, opportunities, weaknesses, and threats. I can link to uh, an article we've written covering SWOT analyses and how best to use them. But for your particular business, you might just quickly, you might begin by jotting down a few ideas. So a strength that you might have is uh, customer service. Oh, that's not correct customer service, an external opportunity that you might see is that most companies don't make time for their customers, something like this, or you might see that there's a particular technology. So you might see that there is a new chatbot AI tech that you could leverage. Uh, you can kind of list out the, uh, the key points that you identify for your business. And over time, as you revisit uh, this strategy section, you might ask yourself, is this still totally relevant? Um, is this still an opportunity? Maybe you ran an experiment and you found out that it wasn't as promising as you thought. Uh, and maybe in the weaknesses and threats, maybe you've developed something that is no longer a weakness. It doesn't need to be there any longer. So this SWOT and strategy section can be kind of revisited over time as your strategy updates uh, and changes. Lean Canvas is a, a bit more of a detailed breakdown. So again, I can link to an article covering what these sections mean in more detail, but um, you can, again, it's very similar. These are just high level frameworks for you to help plan the, the strategy and focus of your business and what you're working on, and they should be developed over time. So one of the reasons it's helpful to have a, a dedicated strategy section with a couple of pre-built frameworks is that 
you know where it is, you know the framework and you're kind of constrained by the structure of the framework. And so you can kind of tweak it over time as things change and you know, you always know where to find it and where to, um, where to make edits. The notebook is just there because while you're doing this, this is quite a limited amount of space and limited number of things you can do. While you're thinking through the problem, solution, value proposition, you might have some longer form thoughts. So you might be saying, you know, or let's say notes on value proposition, if I can type it, you can give it a tag if you'd like to. So this might be strategy and you might just open this up while you're on your strategy page. And as you're kind of looking through, thinking about it, you can write down some notes about your, your value proposition and what you're thinking about. So that's the strategic overview section of your, uh, your dashboard. Of course, you can add other frameworks that you prefer. Uh, we actually have a list of some business frameworks that you can uh, create and drag into uh, this strategy section. But for now, this is what you should see by default. So from our strategy dashboard overview, we go right into thinking about our users and customers. So here you'll see an overview of your personas. You'll see uh, a table that helps you link some key stages, um, initiatives and endpoints for the user journey. So thinking through the user journey and a way to quickly list some specific use cases, which is typically very helpful for uh, your copy writing, for your um, any content that you're doing, any marketing, uh, making it like very specific, not only to a persona, but to a scenario or a use case that you have in mind for your offerings. So filling out the personas can be done by clicking into the existing um, default templates here which is a bit of a, you can do it manually like this, or you can just stay up top with these properties. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, how these are linked to the other areas of the users section. And if you want to quickly create another persona from that template, you can hit new and you can also hit this persona template button, which will just generate those, uh, those key points for you to fill out manually. So we have an overview of our personas and then we also have a section to uh, go through the user or customer journey. So these objects will be stages, key stages of the user journey. You can add to this, so it doesn't have to be this particular order. After sign up, you might have another step, which is something like now nah, well we can do some after the onboarding we might have um something like you know upsell that might be part of your particular journey that you're trying to take the customer through you can choose the personas that are most relevant to uh, this stage so this is helpful if there are some personas who are going to go all the way through to referral or if there's some who are you're just trying to get to sign up so you can select which personas are most relevant and you can also link specific projects or initiatives that relate to these stages so for example the discovery stage might be more relevant for some uh, some content marketing um, and kind of top of the funnel activities whereas you might have some specific um, you know customer feedback um, projects that are more related to the uh, the bottom end of the funnel you also see any tasks that are related to the stage as a roll up and you can link content and uh, some endpoints. So endpoints, we don't discuss elsewhere. So a quick note on that. Endpoints are things that the customer does, which you're trying to, they're indications that this part of the journey has been completed. So for example, the sign up stage, an endpoint might be literally signing up to the mailing list. For the onboarding, it might be the customer goes through a specific checklist of, uh, of actions that they're supposed to take, uh, or they might watch a series of videos as part of the onboarding. So endpoints are concrete actions that our uh, customers 
can take and that we're trying to get them to take to move them through this customer journey. Use cases, I mentioned briefly, this is where we can be quite specific about our scenarios that these personas might be facing, which are relevant to our business. Uh, we can link the persona, we can link the offering that we want to target to them. So for example, if this persona, persona two, is trying to start a blog, we might link a specific email course for them, which is all about you know writing for the web or starting a blog online or something like this. So this is both a brainstorming process for scenarios that you think your users might be facing. And you can also brainstorm a potential offering, which you may not have actually built yet. So if you were thinking about this starting a blog uh, use case, then you might also have the idea of an ebook for them or a course, which is like a video course. And you can add that directly from here. So you could just say ebook on starting a blog. So I just type that name into this offerings box and I can hit new. That's going to create a new item in our products database, which is going to be over here. So we just hit this. It's going to have no other information about it, um, but we can, we can see that it's here and we can start to add more details from this once we get to the products stage. We'll cover that in another video, I think. So I'm going to head back to strategy and I'm going to head back to users just to wrap this up. So we have our personas who we're talking to. We have the journey that we'd like them to go through and we have some more specific use cases and endpoints that are actions we'd like our users to take. Another big factor in our strategy is going to be the market itself, the market that we are going into. And just to keep this simple, we're going to just have a dedicated space to keep track of relevant competitors. So this competitors tab is quite simple. It's just a table of our known competitors that we have researched. We can use these uh, preset properties, things like the entry price, or maybe you want to change this to their average price of their offering. This is the market share. So this could be a specific number uh, of users or customers that we believe they have captured or we research they've captured. Uh, you can tag some specific product types. So in this example, we're looking at uh, a digital agency. And so there are kind of a, a few different types of competitors with some different offerings. So some of them are agencies offering specific services, but some of them are libraries like Envato Elements. It's just an open, well, it's a, it's a paid library of templates. And so you can also see, you can also list the type of competitors. So we have direct competitors, so agencies versus agencies. We have some indirect um, competitors and we have tertiary competitors as well. So indirect competitors would be things that help the customer achieve a similar outcome uh, via a different service or a different business model or a different product offering. And tertiary is you know, almost another step removed from that. You can list other things like onboarding and linking out to the website to remind yourself who exactly this competitor is, is always quite helpful. If you click into the, uh, the competitor item in this database, you can also quickly generate uh, a template which lets you track even more detail if you want to go into some more detailed analysis of these of your competitors. Uh, that's just taking a minute to load. Let's see if we can get it there again. So value proposition and some some other important things that might be helpful to keep track of. That is the competitors tab and related to that while we're looking at the market we want to start thinking about where do we position? How do we position ourselves in this market? So we know who we're talking to. We know what our strengths and um, kind of value proposition and priorities are. I mentioned we know who we're talking to. We know some of the other competitors in the market and what they're focused on. So now it's time to kind of bring it together into our own positioning. You can use this board if you like the visual. Uh, just kind of create it once in Figma using this file and then you can re embed it here, or you can just use this simple board. So the positioning board, I try to keep it as simple as possible. Just pick two factors that exist on a scale. 
So for this example, it might be affordability. So you have expensive and you have very affordable. And then the other one for this particular example is, you know, highly engaging or boring. And by combining those two factors, we get a matrix and you can start to plot yourself and your competitors in this matrix. So your product might be up here, which is affordable and highly engaging, which might put you in a category of one. And then we could look at our competitors that we've listed here. We could even, um, no, let's not do that, but let's just type them in. So Envato elements, where do they fit by these two metrics that we've created? How expensive are they? They're pretty cheap, actually. They're pretty affordable. Um, and how engaging we might say, you know, they're not like very personal in terms of how they engage with you. So we might put them as, you know, towards the lower side of the list. So we could write a specific competitor in here and we have Envato elements down here and we can move our competitors obviously based on what we think. So this is how we could kind of quickly remind ourselves of what are the two key factors that we want to keep in mind for our positioning. And it's, an, it's a neat way to just summarize what it is that we've been working on for this strategy section. Finally, we have a space just to work on some forecasting and modeling. So we've actually added to this Clarity 2.0 um, the forecasting widget. So you now have a list of pre-built calculators that can help you with some common uh, financials and forecasting uh, efforts. So this is just a general checker. You could also just quickly grab, for example, if you were going into a subscription pricing model, there's a calculator here. You could just drag that down below. Oh, I need to get it outside of the toggle. So I'm going to just going to drag it here. I'm going to play around with this, uh, this calculator for a little bit. So I'm going to take a look at the sign up rates, user uh, churn rates. I can play around with the pricing, let's say 39 per month. See what happens to these graphs. Current data, let's say current traffic is actually like 4,500 and we can set the growth rates. Uh, this is multiple values. Let's just give it, uh, change something here, 25 to begin with. And based on the inputs, we can take a look at what this calculator um, recommends. So this is, uh, this is how the total monthly revenue might progress over time. It's the cost versus profit, total profit, churn revenue, some of these useful things that a subscri subscription-based business might want. Once we're happy with the price that we've kind of calculated or landed on, we can either keep this or we could just clear it out and work on another model. So this is just a kind of whiteboard scratch pad to do some forecasting and modeling. And obviously if you do come up with uh, a, a clear outcome or number out of those efforts, just write it down or keep a note of it um, wherever it is. So for example, subscription pricing, we were just looking at, I might head over to the offerings and if there were, so maybe it was this subscription, we would change the price to, what did we say? $39. Yep, making sense. So that covers the tabs of the strategy workspace. I want to keep these tutorials um, a little bit more um, tight and focused. So I think this is about 20 minutes and that might be good for today. We will cover the other sections of the planning uh, menu in future tutorials. So thanks for tuning in to this first tutorial. I hope you found it useful. And if you do want to learn more about Clarity OS, again, you can find a link in the description below. See you in the next tutorial.